I created a new starter for all nine generations, and today I will evolve every single one of them into their middle stages. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Now before we head into the drawing, let's have a quick look at the Kanto second stages. We have Ivysaur who seems to have gotten bigger, a more fierce look and a more detailed plant on his back. We have Charmeleon who got a lot more defined limbs, an extrusion on the back of its head and his flame appears to have gotten bigger. We then have Wartortle who seems to look a lot fiercer as well, has developed wing like ears and has more details in his tail. I believe the biggest things we can take away from this is that they have all gotten bigger and more mature proportions. They all look way more confident in their own abilities. We began by deciding that we wanted to pose to mirror the one of Scepter and added in a sphere for his head shape. I will admit that I was pretty scared to work on this piece because I wasn't sure if I was able to make a version of a raptor that would look a bit older than our previous one. Luckily this feeling disappeared quite quickly and we got a raptor looking body in no time by using some simple shapes. We made sure to make his body a bit thicker and made his head a bit smaller compared to it as well. We then brought back his electric tail which we changed ever so slightly but we wanted it to stay quite simple because it is of course still a gen 1 pokemon. After this we worked on his limbs and it wasn't actually as difficult to draw as the first stage was purely because we now had a reference piece we could follow. The last details we added were the skills on most of the same parts as the first stage. The line art phase actually goes by a lot easier now as well since we just scale up the original designs before starting on it which makes us able to see if it has the right thickness. For the colors the second stages appear to be using a slightly darker and different hue color for their elements. This meant that we were going for a dark and a bit more orangey yellow for its body and we did the same thing for its belly color. The skills on his body got a darker color as well and although I didn't want his eye color to be as bright as the first stage was, I did still make it quite bright to let it pop out from the rest of his colors. The shading was once again a big success for gen 1 and I really think it makes look like it belongs as the second stage of Zaptor. Elector, the raptor pokemon. It is a menace in its homeland, causing wildfires to start from the electricity it generates as it runs. The pictures of Elector are never consistent, as it's so fast that not even a slow motion camera can get a clear shot of it. So far this has to be the most realistic line I've ever made. There are definitely some flaws in the design perspective wise, but I do think it genuinely looks like a Pokemon. It also blends in nicely with the other middle evolutions from this generation, so you could say I'm definitely happy with this drawing. Next up are the second stages of Johto. We have Bayleaf that seems to build further on the already established elements of the first stage. Kulavo mostly changes his proportions, but it also opened his eyes and gave him another fiery element. And we have Croconaw who appears to have changed the most of this trio and became a stronger and bulkier version of its first stage. Our goal would be to play around with the proportions and to see if we can upgrade the already existing elements as well. The first thing we did was once again flipping the pose to the other side and started to build out its body into simple shapes. I wanted to make sure that we used a similar pose to the first stage but I also wanted it to be slightly different and to make it show a bit more strength. We managed to pull this off by giving him one arm to the side which makes him look like he's flexing while at the same time supporting its body with its other arm. We then extended the hair on the top of his head into a crest what of course makes him look a a lot more like a teenager. The first face we drew actually looked really nice already as well, so we only had to make minor adjustments to that part of the design. I did decide to go with a closed mouth because this would make him seem more confident instead of just cute and happy. Our one big struggle point was with the eyes we added to his back previously. I wasn't sure how I wanted to change it or even if it had to be that different from the first stage. I eventually decided to go with a simple but 
about a factive IC backpack. This would be quite a big change because in the first stage it actually looked like it was his tail. It wasn't actually that difficult to make because we only had to use a simple line that would just extend beyond its back. The last things we did were to fix his belly pattern and to make the nails on his feet work. For the colors we just used the same palette but with some slight changes in hue and saturation. Midaterium, the sloth pokemon. This pokemon is an excellent climber thanks to its curved claws and eyes on its elbows. There are very few surfaces that this pokemon is unable to scale. It uses its great climbing skills to climb up the peak of mountains where it refills the ice on its back so it can bring it to the top branches of the tallest trees to try and sleep cool down without being disturbed. I think we did an amazing job with creating an evolution for Minaterium. It once again uses similar elements as the first stage but also builds the concept a little bit further than before. I am definitely quite happy with how it blends in with the others too. We're now going to take a look at the middle stages of Hoenn. We have Grofile who has quite a lot of new details on his design and of course has a big change in his anatomy. We have Combuscon who has now developed arms and much stronger looking legs. Finally we have Marshtomp who has a much more mature body and moves into a more bipedal animal. This is the first region where I feel like the evolutions are a bit more different than just a bigger version of the first stage. We once again started by adding in his face, but I must say I was a bit scared to move too far away from our first stage. The reason for this was that I already had a direction in mind for this piece. I mostly wanted this piece to look a bit stronger, but especially more chill. This was pretty easily achieved by the pose we gave him, since we made the pose look like he was sitting on the couch to watch some football on the TV. We also extended his eyebrows a bit further than his first stage, and were mostly focused on fine tuning all the proportions. I was happy with the design just floating in the air, but someone in my chat reminded me that it would look a bit flat compared to the other second stages in this generation. This made us go with a psychic energy cloud which he would use as a chair. For the colors we went with a slightly darker version of the colors of Psy Ape and we of course had to add a new color for the cloud he is sitting on. We went with a nice yellow color for this element because this color goes really well with the purple color of his main body. Sonki the Psychic A Pokemon. With a new evolution comes newfound power and the power that Psonki has is much greater than before. It is now able to lift itself off the ground with a lot more ease. This ability is vital as it spends so long as a Psy Ape trying to unlock its psychic powers as it spends so long as a Psy Ape trying to unlock its psychic powers that it has hardly learned to walk. Although I quite like this design, it doesn't cut it in between the amazing other second stages of Hoenn. I guess that the final evolution will have to hard carry this entire evolution line. It does however blend in decently well, which is mostly due to the colors we have used. The next region are the second stages of Sinnoh. We have Grotto who has quite a big body change, making his shield move onto his neck and moving his leafy features to its back instead of his head. We have Monferno who mostly just got bigger limbs, but did have some actual changes in his face and tail. Last but not least we have Primplop who just like Grotto has received quite a big change in his proportions and details as well. All of these designs feel like they are building up quite nicely to a different body type for the final stage so that's definitely something we have to keep in mind for our design too. This drawing was actually pretty easy because for us the direction for the final stage was already clear from the start. I'm not entirely sure what the final final stage will look like because I want to keep it open for as long as I can but I did already know that I wanted to have a snake with arms and if we take a look at our first stage we could instantly tell which detail we could add on to this stage. We began by sculpting his face into a more skull looking version and just the fiercer looking one in general. We also extended the pattern of Poisizzle into an almost crown looking extrusion. For the body we first thought of a coiled up pose, but this felt too much like Ekans, so we went with a more active pose instead. Now that the pose was finalized, we could finally bring in the arms and decided to add some pretty sharp claws on them too. This would just open a lot of possibilities for the final stage. 
I do think we made a mistake on the eye department because they feel a bit too big for a second stage, but making them too much smaller made them feel out of place due to the size of the other elements on his face. For the colors we once again just went with some darker and slightly different use of the colors used on Poi Sizzle's design. Toxizzle, the Gorgon Pokemon. This Pokemon seems to not only have to rely on its poison anymore and can do great amounts of damage with its big claws. However, the poison is still a great part of its fighting style since it appears to have gotten stronger and not even vanilla ice ice can be used as treatments for the wounds anymore. Luckily, the structure of vanillish eye seems to do the trick now. In the end I am happy with this finished piece but I definitely think it could be improved big time. I do however think an awkward look fits in great with it being a second stage though. If we would be taking a look at how it blends in with the others, I would say it blends in okay but nothing more than that since the eyes differ quite a bit by being yellow. I created a brush head with all my favorite brushes. I use each of them with every drawing that I make, so if you want to draw in the same style as me, I recommend checking out our website. For only 5.99 euros, you can get the Procreate brush set, which you will be able to use in Procreate. It includes an amazing line art brush, a highlight brush which instantly makes your pieces look a lot better, and many other fantastic brushes. I also want to have a written down version of how to create Paradox Pokemon, that's why I created this step-by-step -step guide. It's easy to follow and I added a bunch more tips you can use while drawing. You will also get the work files of the two Paradox Pokemon we created. And I added two work files with just a line art so you can practice coloring and shading. This guide is also available for 5.99 euros on my website. But since I thought you guys might be interested in buying it together with the brush set, I made it into a combi deal for only 8.99 euros for the both of them. That is a 25% discount, so I know what I would do. <laughs> it is now time to take a look at the second stages of Unova, where we have Surfine, who has gotten a longer body and some more leaves on its back. Pig Knight, who seems to have gotten a lot more swole and beefed up, and just quite a big body change in general. We then have Dewat, who has grown a lot more into his body, making him look more experienced and stronger. Once again, the proportion were going to be the most important part to take into consideration. We of course started by creating his head and surprisingly the body wasn't that difficult. I made sure to go for a cool and powerful stance to really show the power of this Pokemon. It did take a while to make it perfect and I really had to use a lot of fine tuning. I especially spent a lot of time working on its belly marking because this would ruin the perspective if it looked off. The hands got the same treatment because because of the same issues. We then just made his horn sharper and put some extra attention to the eyes. We did this because the first stages were way too big and I really wanted to avoid trying to tweak it once the design was already done. After this we just extended the fur around his neck and made it look bigger and we debated about using a different tail. In the end we decided not to do so and just to keep it simple. For the colors we used slightly darker versions on some parts but didn't go too too crazy because it might be too dark otherwise. It was a long time ago since I last made a drawing, so the rendering took a bit longer than usual. Mediator, the dirty fighter Pokemon. This Pokemon is so strong that it can flip over cement trucks with only its horns, and it brings stream trains to a halt almost instantly. Despite its overwhelming power, the fur on its body is incredibly soft and is desired by many. Although this is the case, no hunters are confident enough to go after this beast. I am extremely happy with the end result of this piece. It is a huge upgrade from the first stage because I wasn't that happy with that one. However, it doesn't blend in too well and that's mainly because of the eyes. They are once again a little bit too big but I didn't want to move too far away from the first stage of course. Next up are the second stages of Kalos. We have Quilladin who has gotten a lot bigger and has some strong and thicker features. Breaks and who mainly changes into a bipedal 
animal, but also has a few extra elements, like a magic wand. And we have Frogadier, who has gotten a faster look, and where the features of Froggy grew a bit further like the pattern on his head. Similarly to the first stage, at first I wasn't sure what to make out of this one. In the end I decided to go into a skinny and lengthy design, and just build out the design elements of the first stage. As always we just started with its head, and then made a simple sketch under it, and that once again turned out to be a great way to create its pose. We were able to use this simple sketch, and just started slowly tweaking it to our liking. I did debate on using different eyes, but the happy look was just way too good for the lore of this Pokemon. The only thing that was a big struggle point, was to make its body look like it actually had some anatomy. I I know it doesn't look like it needs to have a lot, but it does still need to look anatomically correct in order to feel like a proper Pokemon. I did however want to make a few adjustments from the elements I used in the first stage, and those were mainly to use a few extra spheres on the orb on its head, and we of course gave him a bigger tail swoosh. The color stayed mostly the same, and we just used a slightly darker body color. We made sure to make the rendering look like the ones of the first stage we made, since I was amazingly happy happy with that one. Amphilisk, the nursing Pokemon. People have actually considered making Pokemon centers with only the Amphilian line working there because of their healing abilities, relaxed nature and intelligence. The only drawback being the language barrier between humans and Pokemon, as one Amphilisk can fill the role of two nurse Joyce and a chance with how great of a nurse it is. I really love this line. Not only the designs look amazing, but the rendering looks crisp as well. I guess I'm just a big fan of the color palette, because you know, pink is one of my favorite colors. I am however not sure if it blends in with the rendering, but the proportions seem to have been done properly. <laughs> For the second stages of Alola, we have Dartrix who has gotten a lot more details onto his design, like his hair and the broken up elements like his wings. We have Toracat who builds up into a much stronger and beefier looking Pokemon. And then we have Brion, who has gotten a watery skirt and some extra elements on the ends of her flippers and ears. We will just have to build further on our previous established elements, but make sure to add a few new details as well. I'm going to be honest and I wasn't sure what to do for this design, since snails are difficult to build out. I figured out we were just probably going to use a bigger and rugged shell, and see if we can add some extra elements here in there. We once again started by recreating its body into simple shapes, and once those were in, I could indeed focus on the different elements. At the start we made the shell a bit too high, and I guess we just used one too many increments. This was however a simple fix, and we just removed one of the layers. We then worked on the facial elements, and started by adding rocky eyebrows, plus a moustache. I don't know why, but I think I just have seen way too many invincible shorts on YouTube, and I just really wanted to bring that into this design. Sticking with that theme, I also seemed it interesting to move it into a fighting type as well. This is just why the antennae look like little boxing gloves. Another element that was different was the rocky necklace we brought into it, and these were just the only elements I could think of to add. For the colors we just slightly adjusted the colors of the first stage into a more fitting palette for a more mature Pokemon. Snurge, the beach snail Pokemon. This Pokemon uses mud bats that are full of nutrients to rejuvenate their slime. They love to use their antennae to continuously punch hard objects, in order to improve muscle strength and to prepare to evolve their massive shells for storing much needed food and water when winter draws near. I am not sure about the design elements we gave this one. I guess that's mainly because of the limitations I felt of using a snail creature. I definitely think you can go in way different directions for a cool snail snail Pokemon, and it's definitely just because of my inexperience with drawing them. On the blending side, it blends in really well with the other Pokemon, so in the end, I'm happy with this design. We are now moving on to the second stages of Galar. We begin with Thwacky, who hasn't gotten too different, apart from the proportions, other than some bracelets on its arms, and just some minor changes on its other elements. We have Raboot, who has changed a lot more compared to Thwacky, where he now has an entire universe 
uniform and his ears and hair changed overall. Last but not least we have Drizzile, who has changed a lot, but that's mostly because of the change into a bipedal Pokemon. Other than that he definitely has some unique changes like a different haircut for example, which does change his entire appearance. This design was extremely interesting, because I got caught up pretty hard on trying to keep it a puffin. That's why I'm mainly focused on recreating a similar kind of body, and why it might look a little bit too similar to the first stage. Once he had something that resembled the chef and design we made earlier, I started working on the new details I wanted to give him. Some of these parts were a bigger chef head, and we decided to actually give him a uniform this time. This did give me the idea to turn it into a more savage kind of Pokemon, sort of like a pirate. I guess that would also work well with the inspiration of this line, chefs like Gordon Ramsay of course. We also tried to make it even more different by giving him an eyebrow and a small tooth on his beak. The final design element we added were the serrated blades on the tip of his wings. I would say this design might not change enough with its proportions in order to feel that much different. But yeah, my goal is to keep the biggest changes for all the final stages of these Pokemon. For the colors I wanted to play more into the Ravage territory, hence why you made the colors a lot darker than its previous stage. Shepherd, the Iron Chef Pokemon. This Pokemon lives on the rocks and loves to cook for sailors that wreck on the rocky shores. If threatened, they attack with their knife-like wings, and it feels like its evolution has made it a lot more savage. Although it's not the biggest change, I am super happy with the end result of it. I genuinely love the new direction of this line, and I actually can't wait to make its final evolution. Okay, not to blow my own horn here, but I really think I've done a good job on trying to fit it in with the other second stages of this region. Not only the rendering is decent, but the design elements I've used fit in well too. Now on to the last released region, the second stages of Baldea. We have Florigato who has gone bipedal, what seems to be quite a returning theme with these starters, and definitely grows out the elements Brigatito already had on his design. We have Crocodile who has eaten a bit too many Big Macs, and has grown a cheddar cheese sombrero on his head. And then we have the final one, Quaxwell, who has gotten a way bigger brain and attitude. The last part is mainly because of the new eyebrow he got, and he just got a lot of extra details on the rest of its body. I knew from the start that I wanted to bring the bullfighting elements way more into this design, especially because the first stage couldn't showcase it that well due to the limitations of its baby body proportions. This is exactly why I wanted to challenge myself into using a very dynamic pose, and I say challenge because I'm very inexperienced on this department. I really wanted this pose to to feel like he's inviting you to a battle, and to show off his red frill more. I did however struggle a bit more on the head, which was mainly because I didn't know how to make it look like the same type of animal in the perspective I wanted to use. Once I had something I was happy with, I decided to add another frill to the tip of its tail. And just like that, the design was already finished. But in hindsight it definitely looks too empty, so I might be adding some new things for the third stage. For the colors we just once again went with a darker and more mature looking palette, and I still think this was the right decision to move a bit further away from the typical blue dragon colors. Drachamator, the bullfighter Pokemon. This Pokemon uses the frill around its neck to provoke Baldean Tauros into charging towards it. Its speed and grace is a sight to behold as it puts on a performance for all to see. Every applause Drachamator receives raises its ego even further. I will say that I'm happy with the challenge I gave myself, and I don't even think the execution is that bad. There are however many things that could be improved anatomically, but as I said before, this is still a big learning journey for for me, and I'm still improving big time. When we talk about the blending in with the others of this design, I will have to admit that I failed miserably on this element. I definitely think it's due to the lack of details I mentioned earlier, so it will just be another fun challenge to resolve this issue on the final stage. Well, these were all the second stages in this series. Up next are of course our final stages, but I will admit that I'm a bit scared to make them, since it's one of the first times we're making final stage fakey. Well, good 